Why can't I have picked a craft? That was fast. Hello fellow yarn lovers, welcome back to my channel. I've got a treat for you. Check this out. So I've made this hexagon cardigan with a Tinkerbell insert. I have done a tutorial on this and um, disclaimer, I'm not doing a tutorial on how to make this, okay? I'm going to link below a really, really fantastic, fantastic video on how to do tapestry crochet. So that is linked in the description below. But what I'm going to show you in this is how to, well, how I do the hexagons, how I extend the sleeves once the hexagon's finished, how I do the cuff, how I attach both hexagons to this tapestry crochet panel, and how I do the ribbing, okay? Oh, look at that, I haven't sewn in my ends. Uh, give me a second. Much better, okay. Um, I can link a video down below on how to weave in ends, but like, you just kind of sew them around till they make sense. But yeah, I'm like so pleased with this. So without further ado, I'm gonna send you back into the past to past me like I usually do and I'm going to show you what to do this and again I'm linking down below how to do tapestry crochet so if you want tapestry crochet this is not the video for it I will just be kind of giving you updates as I did it because it did take quite a while but if making hexagons, ribbing, stitching it all together is what you're after then keep watching and off I go to the past enjoy Okay, right, for this project, I have bought myself six of these, which is covered in cat hair, courtesy of Sneaky. Uh, so this is Baby Soft, uh, Baby Colour Soft DK. I used the pink ones for Barbie Cardigan. I think it was this brand. It was definitely, like, something boutique -y and nice. Um, so, yeah, I've got six of these because I'm pretty sure that's all I'm going to need because my ribbing and stuff, I'm pretty sure, is either going to be with this... Uh, Wendy Supreme DK, which is also nice and squishy. Um, and I've also got some big value King Cole DK. Now these are still covered in cat hair. I need to stop sneaky getting in here when I'm not around and about. Um, these common balls are 50 grams and like they were all pretty much around the same kind of price range. This was like on sale at um, Knitting Network for like £2.60, I'm going to say. Um, so yeah. These were, I got these in Delta Wool Shop and I think these were like £1.5 or £1.10. I'll link Delta Wool Shop down below because we, we love Delta Wool Shop here. Uh, this I got in Black Sheep Wools. I think you might have seen me grabbing this in the video I did for this. Um, because when I was getting my extra wisteria and my oranges and stuff, um, which I obviously I needed because they weren't in my stash. You know, there was a the few shades I didn't have. So I didn't have this shade of green. I had like very... Never mind. I bought it anyway. So I didn't have this brand though. Mm -hmm. Let's just have a look. They're, they're totally different shades. They are they are so different. I could use this actually. Yeah, so <laughs> Oh, somebody's gonna kill me. Anyway, yeah, I'm Wendy Supreme DK. Uh, 100 grams, approximately how many meters or yards? Let's have a look. Oh, right, okay, approximately 295 meters or 322 yards. Um, and as we've just discovered, you could also use this Stylecraft uh, Special DK Double Knit, which is approximately the same kind of length, and as it's a totally, totally different shade. <laughs> so, yeah, uh, my cuffs, yeah, are probably going to be this. So, these will also be, I think I'm going to either do Tinkerbell's dress. In this, I've got three of these that just seem to be hiding in amongst all the stuff. Um, and now I have one of this shade and one of this shade. Um, yeah, they're totally different. So we're going to go with that um, for like the column and cuffs. I'm, I'll see how it looks. I might, once I've made the hexagons, like it's just see what ribbon or what colour will look better. Um, it's just a shame that I can't find like something to match like the appleness of this like this is the closest I could get but it's still not quite apple-y so you never know the search continues this is probably going to take me like if Barbie Cardigan took me like 60-ish hours of work then this is probably going to take maybe around the same maybe less I don't know but I'll let you know once I've made it but yeah, that's where we're at. Also, I'm going to use a 5mm hook for Barbie cardigan. I used 4.5. This one I want to get done 
quicker so I'm assuming that the extra half millim well the half centimeter might be some kind of assistance and it'll be nice to compare the two once I am um, once I've got both cardigans oh my god I'm gonna have two pretty cardigans oh <gasps> so excited um Okay, right, let's do this. I'm going to stick you in a tutorial mode and show you exactly how I start my hexagons. So, in a second. I would just like to point out that it was, uh, this is Baby Soft DK for Tinkerbell. And what I used for Barbie cardigan was actually this, which is Papatia Boutique. I don't know if I'm saying it right, but yeah, so I did not use Signet for Barbie. I used Papatia. So, yeah. Just thought I'd like throw that in there in case anybody's like, oh my god, I can't find this one in pink. I don't know if it comes in pink. It might come in pink. I'm going to check. Anywho, right, let's do this. Uh, I'm just trying to find the end of the yarn. Currently, I've got two of these sticking out of my... Oh, there it is. Right, okay. Where's the end? Aha, right. Let me just move this aside. All the yarn vomit, I'm sure, will get used up in this hexagon. Right, Um, for reasons that we don't want our hexagon cardigan to come undone at the armpit leave yourself a nice big long tail like I would even suggest like up to like six inches depending on what, how much experience you've had with armpits popping on hexagon cardigans let me just zoom you out because my hands are like everywhere okay so make a slip knot however you make a slip knot this is how I do mine they can be quite fiddly but you'll get the hang of it and there we go right so straight into it for the hexagons like I do not chain one in between my granny clusters so for the start, and I don't magic ring either, I do a chain of four. So one, two, three, four. And then I will slip stitch into the first little uh, chain, which can be fiddly with these nails, but we make it work. Okay. And then you've got a chain of four, you've slip stitched into the beginning and you've got a nice little hole here. So we need to make six granny clusters inside this and each one will have a chain two between them okay so you are gonna just move the tail out of the way um you can crochet over the tail as well right so once you've got the hole like i've got there on that nail they do come in useful for some things chain three and then you're going to yarn over and you're going to make your first granny cluster so once you've yarned over pull it through go through two go through two okay yarn over into the hole pull it through Pull through two, pull through two. Okay, there is the first granny cluster. I'm just moving this yarn vomit out of the way. I love the colour changes. They're so pretty. It kind of reminds me of lemonade, even though it's supposed to remind me of Tinkerbell. Okay, next one. So on each round, when you get to the corners, they, I do chain twos. Some people do chain threes. If you do that, you know, you do you. I do chain twos. So I've chained my two there. So I'm going to yarn over and I'm going to do another three double crochets i work in american terms i know i'm english but american terms are kind of what i like learned crochet in so i use american terms so i need to do another one to complete this cluster there we go okay so we need another corner so we're going to chain two and then we're going to do our third cluster so three double crochets here's the first one Here's the second one and here's the third one okay so we've got another three to go we need to be chaining two in between because it's the first round and each one is like between a corner so we're gonna yarn over pull through two pull through two get another granny cluster and the yarn buff is sneaking up on me let me just finish this cluster yes i'm going to use you just wait there um Right, there's four, so that would be a, a granny square, but we don't want a granny square. We're making a hexagon cardigan. So make another corner by chaining two, and then we want another granny cluster. So three double crochets. One, two, three. Okay, now we have a pentagon. That's not what we want. Please make sure that when you're at this stage, please, please, please make sure you have a hexagon, okay? We need to do another one so we're going to chain two and then we're going to put our last granny cluster in of this round okay and there it is okay and then do not forget that you need to chain two before you join back to that first granny cluster so there i've chained two and then into the one two three into the third 
chain that we did. Okay, I like to actually pop my hook in but like underneath two of the strands. And when you put it in between two of the strands, I feel like it just gives you a like a stronger looking, a stronger feeling join. Okay, I'm going to, some people would like turn it and then slip stitch into the corner, but I'm not going to bother. I'm just going to, let's have a look. At this point for me, I'm going to chain three. Okay, but then I'm going to jump straight into this one here. Okay, so I'm going to jump into there. So I'm going to yarn over and this in, so in each one of these, let's just like analyze this for a second. Okay, so looking at it. I'm just going to leave that there, okay? Making sure we've got six sides. So one, two, three, four, five, six. We've got six sides. So then into each little chain space, we need to make a corner. So these little chain spaces here between your clusters, we're going to be putting our corners. So I've just chained three. Let me just repeat that for you. So I've just chained three there. I'm jumping straight into this one. So I'm going to yarn over into here. I'm going to make a corner which will consist of three double crochets, a chain two and three double crochets all into this chain space. So there's one cluster, chain two and then another three double crochets. So there's one, there's two and there's three. Okay, so we've done that corner. Okay, we'll finish this corner when we get to the end. Um, so once you've done each corner, you will then yarn over, jump straight into the next corner, and you will again do three double crochets. So there's two. Okay, and then chain two. And then another three double crochet. So there's one. two, three. So now we have two corners. So again, yarn over, jump into the third one, double crochet, double crochet, double crochet. I'm going to chain two, and another three double crochet, one, two, Three. Right, we've done three corners so far. We've got another three to go. So in this space, I'm going to do three double crochet, chain two, three double crochet. I'm going to do the same for that one. And then I'm going to do exactly, well, actually, no, I'm not going to do exactly the same for that one. I'm going to meet you back here. Let me just do these two. So these two corners, and then I'm going to meet you back for this one and show you how I end this row. Okay, right, so I've got one, two, three, four, five complete corners. Now this one has got my chain three in it, so I need to do my first granny cluster into this one as normal. So this is just three double crochets. Okay, and then I'm going to chain two. And then I'm just going to do two double crochets. So one, two. And then just move this yarn bath out of the way. And then I need to join to the top of this chain three. So I've got one, two, three. I'm going to join in here with a slip stitch. And then that's that round complete. Okay. So with my rounds, like I don't like to be in the corner for hexagon cardigans. Uh, and the reason for this, if I just grab, because this is the second hexagon that I've done, because obviously I like to make one like first and then colour match it to all my stuff. So let me just get the bigger one and I'm going to show you why I do not like to start in my corners. Okay, I'm to zoom you out a bit for this, right? So this is the first corner that I've been working on. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to find um, where I usually join. Give me a second. It's a bit tangled up. Um, it's so big. I think this is about 19, maybe 20 rounds. Aha, right, okay. So this, I always like start and finish at the edge. And the reason for that is when you start around, like this really just applies to variegated. If you're just doing a solid colour, then it, it doesn't apply to that at all. You can, you know, start in corners. Or if you're changing colour with like different balls of yarn and you're starting in the corners, it doesn't matter. This is purely what I do for like variegated yarns. So when you start around, so for example here, 
I've started with this like nice apple green colour. But then you might end the row on yellow. And then if you'd had the corner, like if you were starting in the corner, so let me just fold like so this corner, you know, it's it's gonna be on the front of the cardigan. If I just fold this the way that I would normally do it. Sorry, I know there's not a lot of room here, but it is what it is. And this cardigan's getting caught on all my crochet hoops over here that are still in my pot. Okay, so I would normally do this fold, so where I start the cardigan and and end the sorry, when I start around and end around like that you can't see because say for example this would be the bottom of the cardigan so the sleeves like somewhere over there so if this is the bottom it's you can't really see a drastic like difference between the colors so if i was here if i was there starting and ending around like i know there's a color change here but it's not like like really drastic it's not like a huge contrast you can see that it's kind of going yellow and green and it's kind of expected but you know if i had it like suddenly joining to something like this it might just look a bit like weird so if uh, yeah if you see there there's like no yellow at all there but i mean sometimes the changes in your yarn won't be so drastic but sometimes they will and i feel like if i have it stopped here then you're either just going to see the front of the cardigan when you're wearing it or you're going to see the back of the cardigan when you're wearing it and you're not going to have the, those drastic changes going up here I stole this picture from Pinterest and it just shows that when you use a variegated yarn that's got loads of like different colours in it, if you start in the corner and then make your way round and end in the corner, then it can make it look drastically different like it does here. So that's why I start in the middle of one of the sides and finish in the middle. But that's enough of me waffling. You know, you do what you want because ultimately you're not making a cardigan for me. As fussy as I am, you're making a cardigan for you. So let's continue with this. Right now I start my rows slightly different so some rows I'll chain three first like I did for this previous one and then on the next row I'll start with a full granny cluster in the middle. So I will chain three to start off that granny cluster and then I'll do two more double crochets like this. Okay and then I'll just this is not a corner so just be sure so you should only ever chain two in corners okay like if you're following it the way i do it they'll just be like six chain twos on each and every round doesn't matter how big the round is they will just be six chain twos so here i don't need to chain anything i just need to jump straight into this corner with a double crochet times three then chain two and then another three double crochets so there's one double crochet there's two and you can see this yarn it's just, it's desperate to be part of this cardigan. Okay, so here is a granny cluster in the corner. Need to chain two and then yarn over and then, oops, and then three more double crochets. Two, three. Okay, now this one here, that is not a corner. So you are just gonna put a granny cluster in there so three double crochets, one, two, three, okay. This is a corner, so you need to do a, a two granny uh, clusters in there with a chain two in between them. So there we go, one, two, three, chain two, yarn over, Three double crochet. This yarn, it's just, oh, yarn buff. Who else has this issue with yarn buff? It's like trying to climb up my hand while I'm making this. Um, right, we need one more double crochet in here. Okay, jumping into the one that's in the middle of the row, straight in with a granny cluster. So one, two, three. Okay, another corner. So I'm going to do granny cluster, chain two, granny cluster. One, two, three, chain two, one, two. Oh, hang on. It's annoying when that happens. 
okay and that's pretty much what you're going to do for the rest of this round okay so just a little recap because i know that some people want this to be in depth so i'm trying to go in depth without sneaky's hair as well i really have to like make sure he doesn't get in here because i'm going to end up with like a cardigan that's like 98 percent yarn and like two percent cat hair um so anyway you're going to do the corners and then there'll just be like one granny cluster in between each of them for this row and then i'm going to meet you when you get back here i'm just going to do my um this one which is a cluster a corner a cluster a corner a cluster a corner and i'm going to meet you back here in just a second okay i've got to the end of this round so i just need to slip stitch into the top of this chain three if i can get it because it's fiddly Okay, there's my slip stitch. Okay, and then to start my next round, because I alternate, remember, between a chain three or like a granny cluster. This is now a chain three one. So a chain three, and then straight away jump into here with a granny cluster. Oh, I'm doing it off screen, sorry. Um, okay and then i will literally just continue so with each round the amount of granny clusters between your corners is going to increase okay so for this round we had one between the corners because like these are the corners here so for this round there was just one between the corners for this round there will be two between the corners because when we come to finish this round you're just going to do two double crochets and slip stitch into this and that means that when you start the next round, you're going to start it with a um, a double, like, sorry, three doubles. So, yeah, that's pretty much what you do. So I'm going to continue working on this. I'll go around and I'll put my granny clusters into the sides and then I'll do my corner stitches, which is three double crochet, chain two, three double crochet. You will only ever need to chain two six times around each side okay so make sure that you've not got a pentagon make sure it is a hexagon okay and definitely don't have a, um seven sides if you have eight sides you're going to end up with a pair of shorts so just keep going and then uh, i will see you once we've done a few rounds okay please excuse the way i look um it's sunday like i have not made an effort today we did a car boot sale this morning where um i bought like some camping equipment which was fun um, okay, so this is where I'm up to. Uh, I have shown you the tutorial for this one, um, which is what I was just doing. So, And then I've got sidetracked. And then I've just thought, oh, well, if I make that one and it started off yellow, like, will I make another one and will it start off yellow? Turns out that this ball starts off green, but, like, that's fine. Like, I'm not bothered. It doesn't have to be, like, absolutely identical. Um, so this is how this one is looking. I'm just going to get the correct side. So this is 18 rows. Um, I've not quite got to 21 because as you like, as you increase like the rounds, so like when you start off, so I can do like a round of this one in like maybe like three or four minutes now because it's only like five or six rows in. But because this one's at row 18, it's going to take like way longer. It's going to take like a good like five, six minutes, like no, maybe seven or eight minutes to do each round because yeah because six times 18 is like a piece of maths that i don't want to do right now so currently it is here um if i was to put this on it would probably not go past my boob to be honest um so it does need another three rounds which will probably give it like well if that's what three rounds looks like there it's going to increase it by like you know like maybe the amount that i need if not then it's totally fine because i could just do like 22 rounds and it'll just be the same size as barbie so yeah that's where i'm up to but it's nice and soft um i have got yarn that i bought previously so i went to delta wool shop at the same time i was getting stuff to make this this one here um and i'm just kind of color matching it so like i always do i work up my panels before i do the tapestry inside um because i need to know that the colors i've got are going to actually match this so the tinkerbell I need to get the tinkerbell. Okay, so on my tablet, I'm literally on bracelet book. Okay, this is what bracelet book looks like. I've got my search bar up and I'm just gonna type in tinkerbell. Not tinkerbells, tinkerbell. The tinkerbell that I'm gonna be using on here. So this is gonna be my back panel, okay? So, let me just hold this. Um, 
uh do i use purple i don't know if i'm going to use purple or not i'm not sure like future me who sent you back in time probably knows so i think that this matches her dress pretty well and it also matches this hang on i'm gonna it's getting dark it's like september let me just uh, put some light on two seconds that's better okay now you can probably see so tinkerbell mm -hmm. tinkerbell's um boob matches this green pretty well and this green matches up to this pretty well it's not identical but it was really difficult to find something so this will be for tinkerbell's dress and then i thought about doing the cuffs a lighter color i don't know if i'll still do them a lighter color or not um I'll make it work you know I always wing it and it seems to turn out okay I mean I winged this and it turned out fine so yeah we'll just see how it goes with that but yeah definitely for the tapestry Tinkerbell's gonna have this dress I could do a purple background and then I need to this tapestry is going to be so difficult because there's so many color changes to make our wing look like wingy and I also need to color match our hair but it's fine we'll get there so let me just continue and get both of these hexagons up to 22 21 rounds and then once I've done that I'm going to lay them out and then I'm going to start Tinkerbell and then when I finish Tinkerbell that's going to give me an idea of like the size and that I can use for the panels because Tinkerbell is like 100 stitch well 100 pixels long that'll be like 100 rows of stitches oh my god what have I gotten myself into <sighs> I think it's 100 I think it was anyway it's yeah it's going to be an event but I'm going to talk you through it. Um, let me just finish up these hexagon panels. I can do this. I've got this. Okay, I'll see you in a minute. Okay, right, it is a mess in here because I have been trying to decide on the perfect colours to make Tinkerbell. And I've been procrastinating about doing this because I just know it's going to be so much work. However, it's going to be worth it. So let's see, there are loads of colours here. So I'm just going to tell you what I've done for each one. So for Tinkerbell's eyes, I have chosen Stylecraft in Aster. These are these are all DK, by the way. So this is just for eyes, Aster. And I know on the picture it matches, the blue matches the wings, but I want my wings to be special. So I've got this like bluey, greeny, sparkly. I don't know where I got this. Um yeah it's just got no band and i've just pulled out my stash so we're going to put that there okay i want the wings to be sparkly like completely so this is for the white bits on the wings so i'm going to put that up here as well let's have a look right so for our hair there's like two different shades of like yellowy that's like a darker yellow so for our main hair i'm going to have this one and then this is just a little bit darker so that's my two yellows for tinkerbell's hair i ummed and ahed about tinkerbell's skin tone and I've decided that it's not going to be pink because, like, you know, she doesn't have pink skin. It's like a beigey colour. So this is the lightest beige I've got in my collection. I think that this one is called... Uh, I know it's Stylecraft. Let me just check because I've got, like, a full ball of it here. I think there's just a slight shade difference, so there must be different batches. This one is Parchment by Stylecraft. Let me just stick that back into my stash. So that will be Tinkerbell's cheeks and body, etc. And then it's got, like, a dark brown. So... I'm going to use this, hang on, I've got balls of yarn everywhere, I'm going to use this dark brown on all the bits where it's like dark brown on there and then for the whites of our eyes, like I know that I've got sparkles for the wings but for the whites of our eyes I'm just going to use like a normal white colour, oh and it's gone off, take a brown, come back, there she is, right so for the whites of the eyes I'm going to use this and then obviously she's got like mascara or whatnot and like the pupil of her eye. So I've got some Stylecraft, just basic black for that. And then for Tinkerbell's dress, I've got this lovely bright colour here, Big Value DK by King Cole. I think this was like £1.10-ish a ball, which seems to match a treat. And then it's outlined with a dark green and I got this in Hobbycraft. It's a women's institute. Um, What shade name is it? It's like just green, basically just green. So, yeah, that is all of the colours. And obviously this colour here will do along a bobble. So, and the background, I'm just going to use this. I don't want far too much of a contrast between, like, everything. And I figured this would be nice. I don't want it, like, dark purple. Um, 
even though it's a really nice dark purple I do like that I just want it to like be nice and mellow like the colors of the cardigan because you know the cardigans like these colors and I thought yeah it's a nice contrast to show it to the background but it's not too in your face so this one I think let me just it's so messy here I need to tidy up um this was 99 pence in I think it was home bargains um I don't think it has a, a shade name it's just like this nice like lilac-y dusky pinky colour so yeah um like I said in the intro I'm not going to do a full tutorial like this but I am going to link a video um the person who does this video she has an absolute like she just explains it like fantastically so she does so much of a better job than I tried to with Barbie cardigan so I'm going to link her tutorial on how to crochet from pixel grids down below but what I am showing you is once you have the panel that you want to insert in your back that is what I'm showing you that you can do okay so I'm going to crochet this up I might give you some updates throughout or I might just do it all in one I'm not sure yet because I mean it's about 100 ish rows let me just check uh it is it's 27 wide and it's 104 tall so this is going to be a big one so i shall see you um once i've attempted to start this this cardigan has taken way longer than i had anticipated okay right two hexagons of 20 rounds and finally ladies and gentlemen a unend sewn in tinkerbell okay Oh, it actually looks, it's pretty good. Right, okay, so we have Tinkerbell. I probably did the wrong complexion, but I mean, who cares? Like, she looks fine. Um, So yeah, all done. So I just did, like, exactly as the pixel grid says, it's like 104 rows high by 27 wide. So I had originally, because it's just single crochet, um, I just had to chain 28 to turn. And when I started doing it, it just was like 27 for each row. There was times when I could have like swore my absolute head off because like on some of these there was like so many colour changes. So there was like white, blue, purple, brown, black, white, blue, you know, and I used a different white and blue than I did for the wing, but it's fine. Anyway, in the tutorial that I have linked below for like tapestry crochet or like pixel grid crochet, like you will be able to do this, okay? Practice makes perfect. This is like... This is probably only the second one I've done, so yeah, but I'm just like naturally good at like winging stuff. So anyway, I can't stop like looking at it and touching it. I'm really pleased with this. So this is going to go between the two panels. So let's just do a size comparison, okay? So here is one of the hexagons. I'm anticipating Tinkerbell to be longer than this, and it is. So that's fine, okay? So because this is like, this is the side of the hexagon. Tinkerbell's longer, that's fine. So my objective now is I need to try these on, okay? Because these are like, you know, my sleeve and my back. So let's take off this fabulous garment here um, and let's get these sides here and pin them just because I need to make sure they are the right size. So Barbie cardigan is 21 or 22 rounds, but it's quite baggy. So I don't want it to be really baggy. So, okay, let me just put you on pause, get some stitch markers, and let me just like pin this up and show you exactly what you need to do to size it on yourself. I keep my stitch markers in this fabulous little tin. This was like a recycled Christmas present. I think it had like lip balm. So that's my stitch marker tin. That's like a million stitch markers. Let's uh, snap it up. Might as well do this like while you're on. So what I'm gonna do is, need to make sure, right, so this, hang on. Right, this, because it's got this dangling out of the pit, this is the inside. So I need to put the outside out and the inside in. So I'm just gonna put like a stitch marker, like every few stitches, just so that it's nice and sturdy and then I can try it on. So I've done my first one. I'll put one into this corner and then I'll put some up here. Somebody has joined me. Good evening, Sneaky. And it is evening because it's half past six. I've been at work all day, hence, I have to do this now and not during the day because I can't make crochet my full job. Anyway, right, I have put stitch markers all along the top like this. Okay, bye. Anyway, right, so I'm going to try it on. Okay, maybe I should like stand up and show you. Okay. Yeah, it's not too bad. It's not too bad. Don't know if I move back. Okay, 
Uh, stand up a bit. Okay, so obviously this would be a cropped cardigan and it wouldn't fit Tinkerbell if I kept it like this. However, I'm pretty happy with how the sleeve is because I don't want it too like baggy and like drapey. So I'm not going to go with any more rounds. I'm going to leave it at 20 rounds, okay? I don't think I need to extend any more in this way. Um, and I don't think I'm going to have to extend any more like to join the back up because like Tinkerbell is 27 stitches. So I'm going to tell you what, I'll pin it all together and then I'll try it on properly. But I don't think I'm going to extend these anymore because it's not even tight in my pit. So yeah, all I'll have to do now is extend the sleeve, which I'll show you how to do. And then I'm going to have to just make it bigger so that it can fit Miss Tinky Bell. So let me just pin it all together and just to get give you an idea of what we're going to do. Okay, it's roughly, very, very roughly pinned together. Okay, I'm going to have to be gentle when I try this on. So, oh dear me, please don't break or come apart. So there's one arm. Okay, so let me just move this hair. I don't really have anything to a random wax pencil, which must be for like rhinestones or something. So here... Right, this would be a cropped cardigan. Obviously, like, I can't do anything about these. So, there's Tinky Bell, right there. So, if you can see. So, Tinky Bell is obviously longer. Like that. Okay. Obviously, I've not pinned it perfectly. So, it will be, it will become perfect as I do it. So, I need to get off me. Okay. So the first thing I'm going to do is, I'm happy with the fit, I'm going to turn these inside out and I'm going to stitch up the arm bits. Okay, so that's the first thing we're going to do now that we're at this point. So let me just take this off gently. Okay, right, I'm going to un unpin it from all of these bits. I'm going to switch you over to tutorial mode and I am literally just going to single crochet this right up, okay? And then after that, I'll show you how to extend the sleeves and I'll show you how to add a cuff. So that is the next part of this video. So um, yeah, here it comes. Okay, and now that the stitch markers are out, I'm just going to, I might start from, I haven't really decided, actually, I'm going to start from where the neck is, okay? So I'm going to get my yarn I'm just gonna literally start in the corner I have this really cool little toy I got this in um, Hobbycraft and it was 10 pounds and it just means if I'm not starting from the center of the ball I can just pull it so what I do is I will just pull this through both of the chain spaces there and I'm gonna just tie it because I'll be sewing these ends in anyway so I'm just gonna tie it and plus this is like the wrong side okay I'm gonna leave a nice tail in for weaving and I'm just gonna move that to the side okay let me just, uh, I'm in a bit of a bad setup here because this thing that holds my, my phone to record this is like not in the best place. And I'm going to start off here with a chain one. So I'm going to just grab my yarn, ignoring this little tail. I'll, I'll do something with that in a bit. So I'm just going to do a chain one like this. Okay, that little tail can just like go over there. So what I'm going to do is just get the matching stitches from each one okay so I've just chained one in the corner I'm gonna get if you look here that's the first one of that granny cluster and I should find if I've done it right the first one of the other granny cluster like on the other side okay and all I'm gonna do is just go along and match them up that's just my tail being annoying there okay so I'll get the second like the middle of that granny cluster and I'll put my hook into the middle and I'll just single crochet okay then there's the end of that one and I'll just single crochet okay hopefully you'll be able to see it a bit clearer if I kind of get you there so I'm just getting this stitch and the corresponding one behind it for the other granny stitch so that'll go into there and I'm just gonna yarn over it pull it through and I'm just gonna single crochet okay so then I'll go into the middle and then the middle and then I'm just going to single crochet and I'm just going to do this all the way along and this is just how I sew my sleeves up so I just single crochet you can sew them if you want and um, this is just my preferred method I feel like it's a bit more secure and this doesn't really create much of a bump on the inside anyway so like I'm fine with this so I'm just going to go all the way along just 
each stitch matching up so middle to middle of each cluster just make sure that they match up um, because I don't chain one in between my granny squares I'm not going to have to chain in any uh, I'm not going to have to single crochet into any chain spaces so I'm just going along here quite happily just in the middle of that one in the middle of that one single crochet in the middle of that one in the middle of that one single crochet and I'm literally just going to do that all the way along so I'll meet you back when I get to the end of here so once you get to the end of that you just need to tie it off because that's your sleeve complete now taking the same yarn with the panel that you've made so obviously here's my Tinkerbell that I've made I'm going to do two rows around it so that it's easier to attach to both hexagons so I'm going to start off in the corner here I'm going to put my hook in and I'm just going to bring my yarn through And then I'm going to start with a row of single crochet. So all you'll do is a single crochet into each and every stitch along the top. And then for each row down the side, you'll do a single crochet into each row. So this was like 104 rows. So I'll end up doing like 104 down the side. So to start it off, I always just uh, insert my hook, chain one, put my hook back in and then turn this into a single crochet. Then I'm just going to go all the way along with a single crochet into each stitch. So because this is 27 wide, I should have 27 stitches. And then when I get to the end of this row, I'll um, into the, the last stitch that there is, I'll make a single crochet, then I'll chain one for a corner, and then I'll turn my work, and then I'll go straight into the same stitch again, but like on the side, I'll show you that. So here I've got my hook and I'm just putting it into the corner, finishing that single crochet in the last stitch. And I've been naughty here. I said to chain two, but I've just chained one. Really, you should chain two. Go back into the same stitch with a single crochet. Okay, and then you've made a corner. So now, if you see, like, each and every row, the, each row is going to look kind of different, but along, you'll be able to pick out which row is which. So you just need to take your hook and then make a single crochet into each one. So in that next row, so the second row down from the one you were just in, that's where you'll start doing these single crochets down the side. So here I'm just happily single crocheting away. So just picking out each like hole of the first, like the first stitch of each row. So in you go, and then you just want to do this all the way like down the side. So here's a couple more, just so you can see what I'm doing. And yeah, so just like into each and every row, just go down. And then once you've done that, so I've just got all the way around. So here's my last stitch. So you can see when I zoom it in that that stitch already has one in the top. But because this is a corner, you'll do a single crochet. And then you're going to chain two before you slip stitch into the first one. And that's going to finish off this row. So there's my chain two. And I'm going to slip stitch here. And then it's my personal preference to um, do like a half double crochet round into the top of those single crochets when I'm done. So if we just have a look, so it's kind of neat and Tinkerbell off. I know she goes in and out in places like there, but you know, it neatens her off and it means that we can attach her properly to each hexagon. So now for starting the next round, which is totally optional, you don't have to put this on, especially if you don't want any more width on your back. So I'm going to chain two. And then half double crochet, I will yarn over and then I'll go into the first stitch and I'll just pull through all my loops. And just like we did with the single crochet row, I'm just going to half double all the way around, treating my corners exactly the same. So doing a half double, chain two, then half double into each corner. So just in case you missed it, here's another one. Yarn over, pull through all three, yarn over, grab, pull through all three. Okay, so just do that all the way around this and then it, once you're done, tie it off. Okay, this is the first time I've put it together and totally seen it, so Sneaky's just uh, helping me out here. So Tinkerbell's finished. Tinkerbell has a row of single crochet and then a row of half double crochet. This is just so I can easily like join up the sides. So this top bit is all sewn up, so like the sleeves are all sewn up there. 
Okay, um, I need to start extending this one. I was naughty. I went ahead and started trying to extend this one, but um, yeah, I'm not going to continue with that. I just wanted to see that it would definitely like marry up nice, and it does, so that's fine. What are you doing? What are you doing to this thing, you strange individual? Anyway, right, so my plan now, I need to extend the bottom. So when you get to this point, you need to extend the bottom so that it like matches up to the length of whatever panel you've got. So your panel may be like way longer than mine. You want to you might want to do a maxi cardi or something. So the next thing to do is to extend these right down, which I'm going to show you what to do with this panel. Then once you've extended them down, you will be able to attach it. So if for example I make this just a little bit too long down here, I could just add some rows onto here until it matches up perfectly. I have no idea what sneaky what are you doing, sneaky? Nikki, excuse me, what are you doing? Weirdo. So that's my next step. I'm going to extend this. I'm going to extend this. After that's done, I'm going to join it up. And then after that's done, I'm going to extend the sleeves out to fit me and then add a cuff. So yes, I was naughty. I started trying to extend this, but I stopped myself. Okay, I'm just going to leave that attached. I'm going to take you back into my craft room and I'm going to show you how to extend the bottom. It seems that as I'm crocheting, the elusive Chloe has joined us. <gasps> She's stealing your attention. Oh dear. Hello, beautiful. Ow, you bitch. Hello, sticky. You won't bite me, will you? Not like this angry old woman. <laughs> okay, at the craft table. Right, so this is the like the sleeve. This is the top of the sleeve of my cardigan. So you want to get yourself down to the bottom of your cardigan, okay? So on the bottom of my cardigan, it finished on like a whitey yellow row. And luckily, when I've crafted open my new ball of wool, it starts like on a, a whitey yellow. So I can just join it straight on, okay? So this side of the cardigan will eventually become like the right hand side. So I'm going to just work the bottom up like going this way because I'm right handed. So I'm going to join in the right here. So all I do to join is I will literally just tie the end on. So I'll just pull it through right in the corner there. So this is the bit that like will be covering your bum, this corner. Yeah, so like Tinkerbell is going to be here. So like this is the bit that will be over your, your bum. If that's how long you've done your panel. Anyway, right, so literally just tie it on like that. That's all I do. I don't do any fancy things. So I'll just tie it on like that. And then I'm just going to chain three. Now, because this is a space where you've gone into, you need granny clusters in each space. So you need in total three double crochet. The first, the chain three counts as a double crochet. So you're just going to add another two double crochet into here. So there's one. There's two. Okay. And then just yarn over, jump straight in to the next space with three double crochet. One. Two. Three. And that's all you're going to do. So you are just going to do your granny clusters into each one of these spaces. And then I'm going to meet you back along just before you finish up at this end here. So there's only like 20 stitches. So I'll just be a couple of seconds getting those done. OK, I just got to the end of the row. So here's the last space. So you're literally just going to put a granny cluster in there. So there's one double crochet, two double crochets and three double crochets. Okay, so that's the end of that row. So you, after you get to the end of the row, you kind of want to go up and then back on yourself. So here, I'm just going to make, I'm actually going to chain four. One, two, three, four. And then I'm going to turn. Hopefully I won't bash the camera. Yay, I didn't. Um, so I've chained four. And then I'm just going to jump straight into here. So here I'm going to do a granny cluster. So one two and three let me just do another granny cluster and then i'll hold up and show you what it looks like so another granny cluster into the next space one two three okay let me just show you how that looks okay so that means that when we're doing the next row 
that we're just gonna when we come back along we're gonna just do like the three double crochets into there but what I'll actually do is when I finish this row I will put the last stitch actually into here but I'm gonna show you that let me just work across here okay so I'm gonna work all the way across there you're gonna do the same because if you're making this then you should do the same um because we're gonna I think I'm gonna go probably maybe about another five or six rows and then I'm going to measure it against the Tinkerbell panel. So let me just get to the end of this row and show you how to finish this row. I'm actually going to go and cut my thumbnails because I've put these nails on and these are making my hands cramp. So excuse me while I just go and cut my nails. Okay, I've cut my nails. They're all cut, they're all trimmed. Right, okay, now I can crochet without getting hand cramp. I can crochet with these really long. They could be like, you know, as long as the actual hooks themselves but no I cannot deal if my thumbnails are too long so let me get to the end of this row and I'll show you what to do okay so I'm right at the end of this row so what I'm going to do is I'm going to just put my last granny cluster into here so there's one two three and then all I'm going to do is I'm just going to yarn over and I'm just going to do a double crochet into the top of that first chain three that I did. Okay, so there we go. One, two. Okay, and that finishes off your row. So what you need to do now is this is obviously a space, so you're going to need to have a granny cluster. So chain three, one, two, three, and then turn. Let me just get it over here and turn it. Okay, so turn it, and then you just want to do two more double crochet into this space so there's one if I can see it there's two okay and then that just starts off that row and it's really really similar let me just put one more in so I can like put it down and stretch it out so another granny cluster in the next space one two and three Okay, let me just stretch it out. So there, let me zoom it in. So you can see, this is where I joined on. I didn't join in like by putting a stitch into here. I just put my granny cluster straight into the original hexagon. Okay, so then I've gone along, and then when I've come back, you just put the chain into the stitch that you, like the first chain three that you did. And then you just kind of continue. So this row is gonna be exactly the same as this one. When I get back along this row that I'm doing, when I get to the end, I'll just put a granny cluster, but then I'll just put two double crochet in my last like chain, like stitch in the granny cluster will just go into here. I'll show you what I mean. Let me just get along and I'll show you what I mean. Okay, I'm just getting to the end, so I'm just going to put my final two granny clusters in when I stop messing it up. One, two, three okay so final cluster into that space there so one hang on so fiddly one two and remember we chained four here so what you want to do is find the like the third stitch so i've got one two three i'm going to yarn over and i'm just going to go in to that stitch there and then finish your double crochet one two okay you can turn you need to chain four one two three four and then just jump straight into that space with the granny cluster so three double crochet there's one there's two and there's three okay so it's literally just repeating the same two rows so on one row you'll finish with three double crochet into there. So you'll just make sure that you do your last double crochet like into the top of the chain, like I did here. And then for these rows you just need to make sure that you chain four, just because you want to give yourself just that little bit of extra space, just to keep the edge nice and straight. I mean both edges on the cardigan. I mean one of the sides is going to be um, attached to Tinkerbell, and then the other side of the cardigan is going to be attached to ribbing so and then along the bottom there's going to be ribbon so if you kind of like 
if it doesn't look totally straight then you can make it look straight you can fix it later it's totally fine anyway you can always block your work but yeah just follow what i did there and then you should be absolutely fine so like i said i'm going to do about maybe five or six rows and then i'm going to measure it against tinkerbell and see i like, kind of eyeball it with how many more like rows i need to add so let me do another few rows and then i'll show you me measuring it next to tinkerbell okay here's the update it has been about maybe four hours so I have extended both of the bottoms of these by 16 rows. So now I'm going to show you how I will stitch Tinkerbell onto the back panels of these. And then after that, we're going to do the sleeves, which I frogged the one that I'd started because I needed to like work on it. And it was annoying me that if I had like one sleeve already done and then I was working at that, that was just going to really annoy me. So let's um, get set back up and let's attach Tinkerbell onto the back parts of the cardigan. Right, so my tail's really long, so this is going to take me a few seconds to pull through each stitch. So what I'm going to do is, here is like where I've tied right there. So I'm just going to go into the first little loop here and go up and out of there. Okay, and then it will just take me a few seconds because I've got a nice long piece of material for stitching in this. Okay, so I've gone into there. And then on the opposite side, you kind of want to do the same thing. So you want to find like the opposite stitches and kind of go into there and there. Like that. Because you want it to look kind of seamless. Okay, And then I'll go into, so I came out of that one. So I don't want to go back into that one. I want to go into the next one. So I'll go into this one and then out of the next one and pull this really long piece of yarn through and then because I came out of that one I'll go into the next one which is that one. I don't actually know what they call this stitch. There is probably a name for it but I don't know its name. So I'm going to pull that through. You, it does make it look seamless though this joint used it for barbie cardigan right so i've come out of that one so i'll go into this one and out of its neighbor like that these stitches are a bit loose and then i'll go into this one and then out of that one and you just want to continue all the way down this side with it just making sure that you don't get yourself into a knot if you've got a really long piece of yarn like I have okay and then that should make it like pretty seamless it probably looks a bit like messy at the minute just because it's not like lying flat I can't lie it flat while I do this because it's like I've already stitched up this bit but uh, right so I've come out of this one so I'm going to go into this one and out of the next one And then into this one, very, very awkward position here, into this one, and then out of that one. Like that. Okay, so I'm going to do this all the way down that side, and I'm going to show you how it looks when it's attached. So just give me, well, just give me a few minutes. Obviously, it's just going to be like a split second to you, so um, here it comes. I just wanted to bring your attention to when I get to these bits here. So you'll notice that these bits are like the rows that I added on. So all I'm doing is just, I mean, you can see the stitches of the chain threes. So the stitches of the chain threes, there's like one, two, three stitches in them. So I'm just coming out and I'm just using like two at a time. So I came out of this one on Tinkerbell and then I'd previously come out of that one on the hexagon. So I need to obviously go back into this and then I'll just come out of the next one in the chain. So I've gone into that one on there. I mean, you could solve this by doing like a row of single crochet on the end of your um, hexagon, but like I didn't, I just did it this way. So I'm just like taking them two stitches at a time. So then I've done that. I'll go, so I came out of one of these. So this is like, another like chain three on the end so I'll just go into that one 
and out of that one and then into this one and into that one like that and actually when I'm working this up it kind of feels like the Tinkerbell panel is going to end up longer so I'm just going to go and put this on the bed and just have a look at it and just see because I don't know if I'm actually going to have to extend this like I know that um, with Tinkerbell it's 109 stitches so maybe like this wasn't the equivalent I'm not sure let me just get to the end of here and I'm going to just see how it looks because I hope it's not bored out or anything or that it doesn't look odd uh, because I'd have to undo the whole thing and just waste 30 minutes um, but I'll get to the end I mean we're learning we're finding this out together so let me just put this in and out of there and yeah let me just uh, quickly finish this row and then I'm gonna go and put it on my bed okay so it turns out that I'd actually underestimated how many more rows I need to do and um, purely on how I've stitched it together I don't know if I'd stitch it together differently it could have been different but I don't know the math is not mathing on this one but yeah hello sneaky um so it looks like I need to do like let me just eyeball this uh, like one two three four five maybe six more rows so yeah I mean it's not like bowing out anywhere it's kind of flat so yeah it looks like I need to do six more rows I don't know if I'd kind of messed it up at the top I don't think I've messed it up maybe I've just kind of tied it like maybe one stitch too low but it's fine I can sort that out when I put the ribbon on anyway so I'm not worried about that at all so um yeah Sneaky's just like supervising. Sneaky, I made a boo boo. What do you think? Yeah, okay. Um, so I'm going to do uh, five, six more rows, see where that gets me, and then I'm going to attach it there. I'm not going to film that, um, just purely because, like, you know, I want to get this done. Like, I want to be wearing this cardigan, like, on Monday. So, yeah, six, five, six more rows, going to attach it, and then I'll show you exactly what that looks like. Excuse the bad lighting, we're in my room because there's just more room for me to faff around in here. Um, right, so I have extended the cardigan and I'm pretty sure that we're matching up now. So let me just get to the bottom there. So I've done an extra, let's have a look. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Yeah, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. An extra seven rows, okay? So I think I might need one more. But like, I mean, this is honestly pretty good, like for a tutorial, because you probably, obviously, you're not going to be exactly the same size as me. So it's good that this has happened so I can show you what happens like when the math does not math. So obviously my math didn't math there, but it's good because I mean, I can just extend it anyway. It's not a problem. So, um, yeah, it's looking like it's looking pretty good. I think it's going to look much better when it's like washed or blocked or whatever. But I'm going to just like stitch it so far. So I'm going to like just stitch down to the bit where I finished there. And I think I might need one more row. So yeah, I just thought I'd show you the progress. So let me quickly stitch this up and then show you if I need to do maybe one more row. Right, turns out it's actually fine. It's actually going to match up pretty well. So I'm still like, the hexagon is still attached to the skein of yarn. And the bottom of like this stitch up bit is like still attached to this. Um, I have no idea where my scissors are, so where is my hook? I'm just gonna chain one and then bite my yarn. <laughs> so I'm gonna, I don't want to put this down because I will lose this, and this is my bed. If I lose this, I'm gonna wake up with this thing in my butt. So let me just uh, <sighs> right here it is. I'm just gonna quickly chain one. So I had joined, so I did my last. Oh, let me get this. My last like. Uh, chain three into there to finish this row so I'm just going to chain one and I'm gonna so professional of me so now my hexagon is disconnected from the yarn and I'm gonna put the hook down and then I can just do my little final stitches into here so hang on where am I attached this is a mess um yeah I'm in here right that's the back of that one so let me just get this final one, just this final row. So up there, gone into there, and then this final chain three, I need to stitch into that. So I'll go into the first and second stitches of it. Pull this yarn through. And then I'm gonna go into the final stitches of 
the actual hexagon so the last stitch and then the corner stitch have gone in like that and then I'll just go into the final bottom stitch of this one here and then I'll go back into the same corner stitch of the um, the bottom of the hexagon and it's just going to make like a nice secure little tie I mean this is going to have ribbon around it anyway right let me just this is like the end of the, of the hexagon so I'm just going to tie it to this like that in a nice double knot um, I mean I don't care if there's double knots in my work like I don't want to wear this and have it fall apart while I'm going down the street right so the bottom of Tinkerbell is now happily secured to the hexagon so again with my teeth I'm gonna bite myself a nice long tail right okay it's attached to the yarn I'm not gonna lose it in my bed so hopefully I'm not gonna wake up with that in my ass later okay so let me just move back a little bit so here is the first half of Tinkerbell sewed to the cardigan. Obviously it looks short sleeve now because this needs to be extended. That's on next on the agenda. Like how many did I extend this by? So in total, so 20 rounds on my hexagon and then I have extended this to fit the 109 stitch long Tinkerbell. I've extended it, hang on, let me count this. Um, 1, 2, 3, 20, 21, 22, 23, okay? So it was uh, 23 extra rows that I've had to add on to this to fit Tinkerbell. I just finished stitching it up. Now both sides are stitched up together. Yay. So I'm going to try it on. And it fits perfectly. Oh, I'm pleased with that. So there's the back. Hello, Sneaky. Sneaky wanted to say hello. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to see how long I need to extend. Um, for Barbie cardigan, I think I did nine rows. So I'm gonna try doing like nine, but I've got to do a cuff as well. So I think I'll get to about there with uh, the extended rows and then I'll do a cuff. So let's get some of these on. I'm gonna show you how I attach the sleeves because I'm gonna be doing them round. So back to tutorial mode. Wow, even though it's October, it is like really, really sunny and, and boiling hot in here. Anyway, right, here is the sleeve, so this is where my hand comes out, and this is like the stitching that we attach the sides together from the shoulder, so this will go along the top of your arm, so this will touch like the top of your wrist. Now, I'm going to start in here, just excuse that end, I'm going to start in there, so I'm going to, like I always do, I'm just going to tie on, might not look as graceful, but like, I want it to be secure. So let me just pull that through, and I'm just literally going to tie this on like this. Okay, so it's tied. Any ends, I can just weave in later, that's not an issue. These are not actually ends, I think this is where I've joined yarn on there. So those are not like ends, that's where I've had to like put two bits of yarn together to, you know, whatever. Anyway, so that end can just like go away to the side. And then you'll notice that this is like two gaps right together. So I'm going to turn this just into like one granny stitch, but I'm going to do it with four. So you're going to chain three, one, two, three, and then yarn over and go back into the same space and make a double crochet. And then don't chain anything at all. And then just yarn over and go straight into here and make two double crochets in there. Just like that, okay? So this is going to count as one granny cluster. So now all you're going to need to do is just granny clusters into each different space. So here I'll do three double crochets, one, two, three. This thing is supposed to spin, it's not spinning, it's just dragging it along. Okay, so then into the next space, yarn over, oops, yarn over, and then three double crochets into this space. And then just continue all the way around. You will have to turn your cardigan, that's just the nature of it. Your cardigan's gonna like spin around and you know try and get all twisted up. Like you just like keep turning your cardigan so it doesn't do that. Mine's probably gonna end up on the floor at some point, but it's fine. So I will meet you back. So don't join on just yet, just see what I do for this. Uh, I'll meet you back when I get around into this space. Okay, so I just got to the last space there. So this is where we did the first two double crochet. So all you're gonna do is just find the top 
of that chain and just slip stitch into it in there like that okay so this is a true space but this one is like a fake space so you don't want to treat this as a space so chain three and then you're just literally going to jump straight over into there so yarn over and then just do your granny clusters so one two three like that yeah so you've just jumped over that because you're just treating those four as if it's one granny cluster i can see the sunshine is getting in let me just it's very bright and very hot in here today so yeah all you've done is just chain three and jump straight into the next space and that should squeeze that one together and it'll just look more like a granny cluster once it's pinched together so you're just going to do the same thing you're just going to keep going around until it's the length that you want like if you are adding a cuff you don't want to make it like all the way to like this part of your hand if you're going to make a cuff i would get it so that it's about here ish or maybe just a bit further back it just depends how you like your cuff so i'm going to get it so it's about there and then we're going to decrease it once it's the right length so if you just continue just balanced you on some yarn so you can see so i've actually ended up doing 10 extra rows on each one so when i hold my arm out don't forget there's no ribbon here yet so it's not like truly fitting just yet so i think it's done all right i think i'm ready for a cuff now because i like it a little bit baggy so like with barbie cardigan that was a bit baggy when i pull it on like you know properly there will be ribbon that goes up here um but i think that's pretty much perfect so i need to decrease this and then I'm going to find the green because I'm going to do the ribbon and the, the cuffs in like just a solid green colour. I think I'll do them in the colour that I did Tinkerbell's dress so that it kind of ties it all up. So I'm going to do my, my ribbon in this green. I know that you are currently balancing on one of the balls of it. It's the King Cole stuff that I showed you earlier on in the video. So yeah, I'm going to quickly show you how to decrease around the sleeves. And this is how I do the cuffs. It's pretty much exactly the same as I did for my denim jacket with the crocheted sleeves with all the daisies, if you've seen that video. So just exactly the same technique, but I'll show you it now. Okay, so for making the sleeves, I'm just using Big Value DK. Uh, what shade was this? Lime. So a very Tinkerbelly colour. So all I'm going to do is, I'm going to get my sleeve here. Let me just zoom out a little bit like that. There so zoomed out so here is my sleeve okay so this is like the top of like where your arm is goes up to the shoulder so this is where i'd like you know ch chained one and tied off so because i hate weaving in ends here's a little trick so if you are working in the same or similar colors then you could just do this all i'm going to do is just tie these two together so i'm going to tie that like that and then i'm going to tie this one up here you might have seen the way um this way to join yarn it usually happens if like you've run out of yarn and you're halfway through a, a row or if you're just you know moving on to the next ball of yarn after you've finished one up okay so i'm just going to tie them like that and then you just pull them together and they should why isn't it working oh there you pull them together like this and then they just kind of like stick together and they are indestructible and then you just like snip off the excess so you just snip off these two here like so so now i can just continue and that's one less end that i have to weave in because i despise absolutely despise weaving in ends i'm gonna have so much fun when it comes to doing all these tinkerbell ones um right so this is where we've ended so even though i chained one i'm just gonna kind of go back into this stitch here the third one of this granny cluster and I'm just going to pull this back through so I can work with it like that. So I'm going to just chain one and then I'm going to go back into it and I'm going to pull through my yarn and I'm going to finish that stitch. And that is a single crochet because what you want to do to set this up, this was just like the end of the, the hexagon before we sewed it all up. So I like to kind of neaten it off with just a row of single crochet around the outside before I'll do my decreasing slip stitch. You could do this row of single crochet in the colour that you've done the actual like hexagon with, or you could do what I've do and what I'm doing, and you could just, you know, use the, the sleeve uh, the rib and you could just use the ribbing 
colour if you want to. It's totally up to you because, you know, it's your design. I just didn't mind that I was going to do it in this colour because it's so similar to this actual cardigan here. However, if, like, for example, in my next project, I was doing, like, a black sleeve, but I wanted, like, you know, a contrasting cuff, like, I wanted, you know, like, a white cuff or a purple cuff, I might have done this row of single crochet in the black before I cut my yarn and then sewed in that end. But because, like, this is green and it pretty much just looks like what I've been using, I don't mind that I'm going to have to do my single crochet in this colour. So anyway, into the next stitch here. Yarn over, pull through, like that. And this little bump, um, it, just be wary of it, it'll just, it'll go away. The next one. And just that little bump is just going to have to, like, settle down somewhere. There we go. Okay, and literally just into every single stitch you just want to do a single crochet. You don't need to do them into the gaps because you're just doing one into every single stitch unless you've chained one. In that case, if you've chained one between your granny clusters, you would probably have to go into the space. But, like, I don't chain one, so I don't need to. There should just be one into every single stitch. So I'll meet you back at the end in just a second and I'll show you what to do. For the actual decrease. Right, I'm on my final couple of stitches, so in here, single crochet. Okay, so here we are, like the final one. So I'm just going to go into the top of the first single crochet that I made. If I can get into it, there we go. And I'm just going to slip stitch. Okay, I'm going to pull it up and I'm going to change hook size. So this one is a five millimeter. I'm starting to do that thing when it wears away. So this is my five millimeter. I'm going to switch over to a four and a half millimeter just because I like the um the sleeve, like the cuff to look like a bit like like smaller stitches and a bit neater. So there's all my single crochet around, and then my favorite thing to do is just slip and skip. Okay, so we started in this one, so we're currently on that stitch there. I'm gonna skip that one and I'm just gonna slip stitch into this one. So it's really important that you don't make your slip stitches too tight, but don't make them loose, okay? Because you want this gap to shrink, okay? You want it to ideally fit over your hand. If you have, like, done a hexagon, which is way more rows than I have, so, for example, this is, like, 20 rows, this hexagon. If you've done, like, 30 rows or you've done 40 rows, you might need to skip a couple of extra stitches in between to bring it right down to arm size or... You might need to do what I've done here, but do two rows of it. It's just, I mean, the, the cardigan is custom to you and to how you're making it. This is just my technique because this works for me. This this fits me. So I'll just go into the next one. I'm going to skip and I'm going to slip. So slip stitch into here. Okay. And then I'll skip and slip into that one. And I'm just going to do this like all the way around. So I'll show you a couple more. I'm in here, so I'm going to skip and I'm going to slip into there. And this will literally half the circumference of the cuff. So I skip and slip into there. This yarn's a bit fiddly. I think this is more of a knitting yarn than a crochet yarn because it keeps coming apart. Okay, skip and slip into that one. Skip and slip into that one and you can see that it is starting to like bunch up the way you want a cuff too so I'm not making these too tight along here so I will do like around here and then I'll meet you just before we finish this row again okay I'm just about at the end I didn't actually put a stitch marker in <laughs> one thing I forgot to mention is you might want to put a stitch marker the reason I know I'm getting to the end of the slip stitch is because I can see here which is like the top of the arm so I know that if I follow these up then I've started my row and I think it was this one here so I'm just gonna slip stitch into that last one right there okay let me just chain one just so I can pull that so it won't come undone okay and that has created like a nice width for my hand. So if I try and put my hand in there, that is absolutely fine. That fits me. That's going to be nice and snug. Well, not snug. It's got a bit of room, so it's perfect. You want to do a double crochet into each one. So I'm going to do my stacked double crochet, which is, hang on, let me just start again. So I'm going to just go back into that stitch. 
I'm going to pull that through and make a single and then into here I pull it through and then we've got a stacked double okay so you just want a double crochet into each and every slip stitch that you made just like when you're doing the row below don't make it too tight like I did there and then I'll just pull it through and then there we go so literally into every single slip stitch just do a double crochet and I will meet you back to start the next row okay I just finished the final uh, double crochet in there so I'm gonna now slip stitch into the top of the first uh, stacked double that I did so if I can just get in under both of its loops like that and then I'm just slip stitching there okay so that's that row complete so now we are ready to start the back loop front loop uh, ribbing so just chain one yarn over and then this first stitch here that I've isolated since you've you've yarned over you're gonna go behind it okay pull your yarn up pull through two and then pull through two and that's your first front post for the next one you'll yarn over and you'll go through the back and that's a back post and then the next one you'll go front post and then the next one yarn over and you'll do back post like that and then you'll just continue all the way around the row so the next one is a front post next one is a back post so make sure that your yarn over stays yarned over okay and it's not decreasing it anymore it's just making it nice and stretchy and comfy so I'm going to keep going front post back post and then I'll meet you when you get back to this stitch and I'll show you how to start the next row okay just finishing that off I've ended with a front post so it just means that my starting stitch was a front post and my ending stitch was a front post but it's totally fine I think that happened on my other um on my genom gilet sleeves and honestly nobody's looking so close that it matters okay so here I'm literally just going to slip stitch into the top of the first front post that we did like that okay and then I'll just chain one and then just yarn over and front post again just like that and then yarn over and back post so always do front post into front post and always do back post into back post and you were just going to continue with this like for as long as you want your sleeves and this technique also works on other garments as well so it's not just limited to like hexagon cardigans you can do it like on regular cardigans or you know you could try it on anything really even jumpers right, I don't know where the footage went for doing the ribbon but all you need to do for the ribbon around the outside is start it off just like you did with the cuff so do a row of single crochet all the way around the cardigan when you're doing the single crochet into this corner, so you only have two corners, which are just at the bottom of the cardigan, so there and there. So on the row of single crochet, do a chain two, and then when you go around and do it exactly the way we did here, we're just not going to decrease at all for this, so don't slip and skip here. All you're going to do is single crochet, and then you'll do a row of double crochet into that, and then you'll just front post and back post from row three onwards. When you get to this corner here, instead of chaining two in the corner, just put three double crochet into the corner space and it gives you a nice round edge. So that's all you need to do for the ribbon on your cardigan. And I did five rows around this and it turned out really nice. So here it is in all of its glory. Um, I'll put it on. Let me just put it on for you. And here it is. Look at this. I'm absolutely in love with the way I've done it. It fits perfectly, like it's measured nice to myself. Sorry, I've been so poorly, my voice is literally going. Um, I like the cuffs, so I'm happy with those. I like the length of the sleeves, and I'm really pleased with how Tinkerbell herself turned out. So yeah, if you like this, I've got, oh my God, you guys are gonna love my next project. I am using this for my next project, but yeah. If you like my content, feel free to like, comment, subscribe. I do have Instagram, so you can jump on over to my Instagram. I do have TikTok. I don't update very much, but you can jump over to TikTok. 
and um, yeah, I usually float around in Facebook groups as well. So you might see me there saying, look at me, I'm a YouTuber. But anyway, yes, if you like this, please like the video, please share it. Look, look at Tinkerbell, look at that face. Let me do this off again. Please subscribe. If you want the alpha pattern for Tinkerbell, it is linked below if you want to try this yourself. I think this pattern's supposed to be for like making bead bracelets, but anyway, I stole it from Bracelet Book, so enjoy that if you're going to do that. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you guys in the next one.